What's up, everyone? Welcome back to another episode of Rugby Player Reacts. I am your host, Jacob McDonald. And today, we're focusing on a player by the name of George Kittle. He comes in at number 50 on the list. Now, I'm going to say that last year, he was in the top 20. And I'm going to say that I expected him to be in the top 20 this year, too. So, there's been a fair few people up in arms about George Kittle's placing on this list. And I might well be one of them, too. So, I'm going to hold my judgment until we get into the video. He has come in at number 50 on the list. So close. So close to that Super Bowl, but not quite. Guys, we are officially at number 50 on the list. We're halfway through. Stay tuned. We're going to roll the intro and crack into it. Right, guys, uh, let's get into it. Boys. Wow, hey, guys. We're not going to see a Canadian accent again, are we? Hey, guys. Wow, we're going to play football. He's one of my favorite players to watch play. Look, this is a child's game, and we're playing it as men, uh, but you should never lose that childlike joy for the game. Absolutely. <laughs> and I think he has that childlike joy, and that's something that should be embraced and appreciated. Sounds fun today, boys. Look at that. Now that is a surprise. Not only was he in the top 20, but he was in the top 10. I'm going to say that he only improved last year. So that means that either there's other players improving even more so, or maybe the defense is beginning to work this guy out. Either way, let's go. My favorite game of this season, I think it was going into Gillette Stadium and being the Patriots in New England. Gillette Stadium has a history, and so being able to play there and get a win there, and like, do it the way that we did it. It was just, it was really fun. Our run game was dominant. We ran up. Now that I'm led to believe is the proper way for a tight end to block. Maybe, uh, maybe Tim Tebow should have given him a call. And down the field. Oh! The first down! Woo! And our offense is clicking. And they put Gilmore on Kittle. So oh, dog. You know, we had Steph. <laughs> so dog. Well, you're not going to get much out of Gilmore, that's for sure. Who I feel like is the best corner in the league, matched up on him, and he was able to run around, get separation, and make a catch. That really he would be happy with that. Speaks volumes. Put it on tape, man. Clinical, bro. Clinical. Hey, guess who ran that against? That's Gilmore, the reigning defensive player of the year. Exactly. That is a tight end on possibly the best corner in football. And he wins by three, four yards. Surprising quickness, I'm going to say. Surprising. Enough to get away from Stefan Gilmore. Hey, what's better on National Tight End Day than getting the day off early? That's right. Boss lets you go home from work early. Go home after lunch. Woo! He's so much bigger than all these safeties and corners, and a lot of times that's who you have to match up on him. Yep. And you're not a receiver, and you're demanding you know, the respect of a defense to have to put their best coverage guy on you. Now that means that guy is not available to cover maybe your best receiver. Ooh, shoot him. So I think in George being able to get the attention of a defense, he opens up things for everybody else. Caught by Kendrick Bourne. Yes, baby! Hell yeah. I got triple covered. <laughs> exactly. And that opened up a pass for the free man. And actually, come to think of it, for a player like a, a wide receiver or a tight end, to be double teamed or even triple teamed on a regular basis, that is going to decrease their production, which is then going to decrease the place that they get on this list. So I'm going to say that that might be what's happened with George Kittle. Maybe he's been double teamed over and over again, so his production's down. But to confirm, we will look up his stats. He's 27, he's 6 foot 4, he's 250 pounds. Classic tight end. Pick number 146 in the fifth round of the 2017 draft from Iowa, and I'm going to say that was a steal. Went to the San Francisco 49ers. He's been there ever since. He's made two Pro Bowls so far, excluding last year. Played four years at Iowa, but didn't seem, from what I'm seeing here with the numbers, to get the opportunities he might well have wanted. But it was enough to get him drafted in the fifth round. He runs a 4-5-2 40-yard dash. He runs a Three cone drill in seven seconds flat. He's got a 35 inch vertical jump and an 11 foot broad jump. 18 reps on the bench. He's strong. He can block. He can run. He can catch. And he can do a pretty decent Canadian accent. 
This is absolutely, listen to this, listen to this guys. This is fucking insane, all right? There's no other way to describe it. On May 4th, 2017, the 49ers signed Kittle to a four-year, $2.69 million contract, okay? Four years, $2.69 million. All these guys want to do is play well enough to secure that second bag, right? And that's exactly what he did. He went from having a four-year, $2.69 million contract to securing his second deal, which is a five-year, $75 million contract, making him the highest paid tight end in the league. That is what I call securing your motherfucking bag. Wow. <laughs> yeah, you the go, honestly. Yeah, I was just... But as far as production goes last year, he did drop off, and that's because he played half the games. He only played eight games last year. 634 yards from eight games, which is not bad. Two touchdowns, two rushes for 17 yards, no fumbles. So he, he signed his five-year deal. He missed two games due to a knee injury. He returned in week four with 183 receiving yards and a touchdown. In week six, he had seven receptions for 109 yards. And on November 5th, not long after that, he was placed on injured reserve with a broken bone in his foot, which he recovered from and was thankfully activated on December 25th, 2020. He holds the NFL regular season record for the most receiving yards in a single half by a tight end with 210. He has the most receiving yards in his first three seasons ever by a tight end with 2,945. And as far as the 49ers franchise records go, he holds three. The most receiving yards in a game by a tight end with 210, which was all in one half. He has the most receptions in a season by a 49ers tight end with 88. And he's the first tight end in 49ers franchise history to surpass 1,000 receiving yards in a year, which he's done twice in 2018 and 2019. So with all that in mind, let's continue kind of taken back. I've never really seen a talent like that at a tight end position. Give it a Kittle on a tight end around for a first down. He bangs down to the Arizona 10-yard line. I in the round? Are you kidding me? You're just mad him? Yes. Are you kidding me? That's definitely one of my favorite tight ends to go against just because I know I'm going to be getting 100% each and every play. Oh, what are you good, dog? Yeah, oh, come on, man. What do you mean you're good? This is football, man. <laughs> Just goes to show when you're when you're six foot four and 250 pounds taking on someone who's about five foot nine and 180 pounds she is a bit of a mismatch in fact it seems george kittle felt quite bad about that which just goes to show what kind of guy he is he really takes pride in blocking he takes but even gave him a little sympathy tap look at that lifts him up he really tap tap takes pride in blocking he takes pride in setting edges no What's up, baby? Bring them both. I mean, Kittle does everything. I mean, best blocking tight end. Just dominates people in the run game. Out of here. I wouldn't be surprised if a guy like Darren Waller looks at George Kittle and models his game after him. I mean, he can make all kinds of plays in the passing game. That may be the best catch he's ever made. And then he just attacks, running through everybody and just being <laughs> the, the Tasmanian devil that he is out there on the field. He's not there, but he's fun to watch. I think he's like Tasmanian devil, is he? You ever been to Tasmania, Travis? No, I don't think so. Trying to tackle an 18 wheeler. He just has a different motor that a lot of people don't have. You can't coach that. That's just effort, baby. I wish I had that motor, honestly. Oh! 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 <laughs> Let's go! Woo! He's a kid out there. He's an overgrown kid. And at the end of the day, guys. At 30 years of age, as I sit here in front of you, that's how I feel. <laughs> that is how I feel. As soon as I turned 30, I coined a new phrase. 30 is the new 20. And if you don't believe me, try it. <laughs> try it, guys. Try it. Stay young. Age is just a number. And I will tell you right here, right now, that you're only as old as you feel. And right now, man, I don't even feel 20. I feel 18. I really do. And right now, guys, knowing that I'm going to have 100 videos that I'm proud of, that you guys can enjoy, knowing that... This 2021 NFL season is upon us in just a short couple of weeks. I mean, I, I do feel like a kid. Can you blame me? No. And can you blame George Kittle? No. But I would say that with the guys who are more serious in the game, he'd probably piss them off, which would make George have even more fun in the game, I'm sure. So guys, thank you for watching. We're into the top 50 officially. I cannot believe it. And in the next video, we are looking officially at a cornerback for the Patriots, which 
look, the Patriots, yes, cornerback, not so much. Anyways, his name's JC Jackson, and I'll see you then. Thank you for watching, thank you for the support, and peace out.